everyone and welcome to this video. It is super duper hot in Germany right now so I'll be very quick today. <laughs> if you've watched one of my older videos you've probably seen this beautiful building. My friends and I designed that for a, a university project and today I'm going to show you how we created that roof sh uh, wave shape roof uh, in Dynamo. Okay so let's get started. Um, I will assume that you have some basic knowledge about Dynamo, so I don't have to explain everything. If that is not the case, I would recommend you to watch the Learn Dynamo in 10 Minutes video from the Revit Kit. I will put a link in the description box. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So, this is our graph that we created. And the goal that we want to reach is we want to create a curve in the front with Dynamo and a curve in the back and then we want to connect those two and create a surface so that you get this soft wave shape that we can then use as a base of our roof and for that we are going to use NURBS curves so just to show you quickly what a NURBS curve is and we're going to take a look at this picture so a NURBS curve has a start point and an end point through which the curve directly goes through and then one or two or more control points that are here, C1 and C2, that control the, the shape that the curve takes. The curve doesn't directly go through them, but it kind of um, gets directed towards them. So when you move those control points, you uh, change the shape of the curve. But it will always remain sort of a smooth nice curve shape which is exactly what we want for our wave so let's see how we recreated that in dynamo so the first thing we need is a start point and an end point for the nerves curve and um, there are multiple ways to do this we used a code block because we had this factor h with a number slider but of course you could just simply use the point by coordinates node or any kind of node that returns you a point and once we have those two points, we can use the line by start and end point to connect those two points by line. And now if we hit execute, we already get this line through those two coordinates. And now the second thing we need is, of course, the control points. So if you remember, those points that influence the shape of the curve. And because we don't want to use global coordinates for them, but we want to have them relatively to their distance to the line. We need to divide the line with this point at parameter node. So what this does essentially is we entered here um, partitions of this line. So zero would be here, one would be here, and then at 0.2 we want to have a control point, at 0.4 we want to have a control point, and at 0.7 we want a third control point. And to get those, we extract the coordinates from those, from those stages of the line. So when we execute this, we will hear this um, node will return a list of the coordinates at those points. And you can see it here in the preview as well. And what we do next is we take those points and add a distance parameter that is controlled with the, those number sliders. So maybe let's look at what we exactly do here in the code block for the first control point. So in the first line, we say, take the first entry, so this one, those coordinates here from this list of points and set it as C1. And now here in this line, we want to create a point by coordinates that has the same X coordinate as uh, C1, the same Y coordinate and the same set coordinate plus this Y factor. And now if we feed y to it as this number slider and change from manual to automatic, we can see 
that this point will wander up and down when we change this number slider. And we do the same for the second and the third control point. And then we get, we can have those move anywhere. But as you can see, uh, this is still a straight line. Those control points don't influence anything. So we're not yet there. We need to do one final step. And that is, we need this nerves curve by control points um, node. And to this node, we need to feed a list of points. So we have here this code block in which we say we take the zeroth entry from this list, oops, which is the first point. Then we, as B, we take the, the first control point. As C, we take the second control point. And as D, we take the third control point. And then the last point of the NURBS curve is the last point of this um, list, which is also the end point. And now we can feed this list of points to the NURBS curve. And now, because we set it to automatic, we can already see this curve and start playing around with it. Let's make it a bit bigger with those number sliders. <laughs> but I think the values we chose were 0 0.5, 0 and 3. Yes. So now you can copy all that and create a second one of those to get the curve in the back. Let me set, set this back to manual. And then we have two curves. And now we want to connect those two curves to form a surface. And to do that, we first need to put both curves into a list. And then we can feed this list to the surface by loft um, node. And when we now hit apply, then voila, we get our surface. And the cool thing is, if we now set this back to automatic, we can of course use the number sliders from before to influence the shape of the roof. The same, of course, goes for the back. Oops. And in this sort of way, with this rather simple graph, I would say, you can check out so many design options and really play around with your design to find some sort of optimum shape that you want to reach. Now, the last thing we did is we used this surface thick node to actually create a really like to add a dimension to it, to make it a real object and not just a surface. So here you can see the edit dimension and then we can export it to a family so that you actually have a Revit family file with this geometry uh, that you can import into your project. So this node is from the Springs package. If you don't know that, you can download it and use it. It has some very helpful nodes in it, like this one where you can set all these uh, different parameters, like even material, etc. And then you will end up with your Revit family. If that was maybe a bit quick for you, I am going to upload some screenshots, I think, from our graph onto my Twitter account. That's twitter.com slash thatbimgirl. Um, 
But if you have a better idea of how I could share it with you, then I'm also open for that. Let me know in the comments. But, but you will find the, the screenshots on Twitter. And as I mentioned before, I would really love to get to know my audience better. So my question for you for today is, what is currently your favorite construction project? And um, write it down in the comments. I would really love to see some cool projects from all over the world. Write down what inspires you, what project inspires you the most at the moment. My favorite project at the moment would be the MX3D bridge in Amsterdam. It is the first 3D printed steel bridge. And I think it's a really cool experiment, not only because it's such an innovative technology, but also because I really like the design. I think the design is really cool with the sh all the shapes. Um, and also I loved how, they, how you could participate online um, because they shared so much about their progress on their social media feed so you can really follow through the progress and I really like that a lot. I think it's very cool that it's now finished and I can't wait to take a look at it when it's installed in Amsterdam. So yeah, that would be it from my side. Um, can't wait to read your comments and then see you next week with another tutorial. Bye bye!